Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to another exciting language arts lesson. So today we're going to read a different read aloud and practice our questioning. So we've been talking about our QAR question answer relationships and all the different types of questions that we might come across. And remember, these are the questions that we use to help us comprehend or remember what we're reading. Doesn't matter if you're reading a science book, if you're reading a fairy tale, if you're reading a make-believe fictional story or a chapter book, doesn't matter. You have to make sure you understand what you're reading. So some of the types of questions we've talked about this week are the right there or go questions. Remember, I can go and find my answer. We've also talked about those yellow slow down, like the yellow on the stoplight. We have to use some brain power and still search but we can find the answer. It might even be across a couple pages that we have to look. We also have those red stop questions, which means it's the author and you. This is where you're gonna have to use your schema. That means knowledge that you already have from other grade levels or your experience and what's in the book. And you put them together to figure out your answers, like predicting. And then the last time is our connect questions where they're asking your opinions. So today we're gonna to be reading a story called The Invisible Boy. And if you looked in your assignment today, you're gonna to see the questions that you're gonna answer after you've watched the read aloud and heard the story. I'm not gonna to pause today and have you reflect as we go. So you might need to come back and watch this a few times in order to answer the different types of questions. This story is so important because we don't want to become the invisible boy, and we don't want to make others become the invisible boy. So I want you to think about that as we read today. The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? I want you to look at him closely here. See all these boys and girls are in color. Notice that Brian is not. Even Mrs. Carliti has trouble noticing him in her class. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Nathan has problems with what Mrs. Carletta says, volume control. He uses his outside voice too much inside. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first, then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends, only Brian is left waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others, let's play ball. Notice Brian. I bet you're having a heart moment where you're feeling bad for Brian. Maybe you've seen this happen before. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk all about her birthday party. The, the rope swing over the pool was just awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everybody did except Brian, he wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings, space aliens locked in intergalactic battles, greedy pirates digging for treasure, and superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. I want you to notice this page, how Brian's got some color now to him, and so does the things around him. Hmm. 
Hmm. On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotta introduces Justin, a new student to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. Brian's face here. See, he's got a little bit of color there. Oh, something might be changing. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's belugi. Bo what? Belugi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I eat boogaroogie. And the kids laugh. All of them that is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. It says, Justin, I thought the belugi looked good. Brian, and there's a picture of Brian saying yum with his little chopsticks there. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Look what color he is. He's not all black and white. Something's happening. Hey, Justin, Emilio calls from the tetherball court. You're up next. Uh, sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotta asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a very special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Look, but Brian, back to black and white and being invisible. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Um, Mrs. Carletta said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio, let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Look at Brian. Is he invisible now? He's starting to come back. Mrs. Carletta gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Look at their picture. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. Mm, things have changed. And here they are. Drawing and creating working together, smiling happily, sharing their story. At lunchtime, it's lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout, hey Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Cookie, thanks. Maybe, just maybe, Brian is not so invisible after all. The end. I want you to think about how did Brian go from being the invisible boy to not being invisible at the end? And I also want you to reflect today on have you ever been the invisible boy or seen someone else in that situation? And what can you do differently 
because as a class, we never want that to happen. All right, if you need to come back and listen to this multiple times today, go and answer your QAR strategy questions and have a wonderful day.